Hello and welcome to the SuperMap iDesktop tutorial. In this tutorial, we will talk about the various coordinate systems and how to deal with the data associated with them. So before we start off with types, let's get a basic understanding of coordinate systems. Now, the Earth isn't quite a perfectly round sphere. In fact, its true shape is something like this. Next, let's talk about a geoid. An equipotential gravity surface is regarded as being equal to the mean sea level. The Earth's geoid is a surface which is complex to accurately describe mathematically. An ellipsoid or spheroid is a mathematically defined surface that approximates the geoid. A datum is a system which allows the location of latitudes and longitudes and heights to be identified onto the surface of the Earth, that is, from where and how the locations can be measured and defined locally to reduce inaccuracy. A geographic coordinate system, or GCS, uses a three-dimensional spherical surface to define locations on the Earth. A GCS includes an angular unit of measure, a prime meridian, and a datum, which is based on a spheroid. A projected coordinate system, or PCS, is defined on a flat, two-dimensional surface. A PCS is always based on a GCS. In addition to the GCS, a PCS includes a map projection, which is a set of projection parameters that customize the map projection for a particular location and a linear unit of measure. This was just a basic understanding of coordinate systems. We do recommend more reading on each of these in order to develop a deeper understanding. So let's start off by developing an understanding of the three kinds of coordinate systems in GIS software, namely the planar coordinate system, geographic coordinate system, and projected coordinate system. In the planar coordinate system, which is essentially the Cartesian coordinate system in mathematics, any point can be the origin. So the coordinate system of this plane without projection parameters is generally used as the coordinate reference of the data irrelevant to the geographic position, such as road construction, CAD drawings of architectural plans, etc. A geographic coordinate system is a spherical coordinate system that uses latitude and longitude to represent the position of any point on the ellipsoid, and the position of this point can correspond to the actual location on Earth, such as WGS 1984, Xi'an 80, Beijing 54 coordinate system, and so on. The projection coordinate system, which is a special planar coordinate system based on geographical coordinate system, can project any point on the ellipsoid to the plane by projection transformation and calculation, and can use the two-dimensional plane coordinates to express its position, which corresponds to the actual location. In a GIS software, every data source, data set, and map have their own coordinate systems. In SuperMap I Desktop, we can view their coordinate system information by right-clicking, selecting Properties, and then looking into the Coordinate tab. Also, a newly created dataset has the same coordinate system with its data source by default. The coordinate system of a new map is also identical to the first dataset added into it. We will demonstrate these ideas in the next slide. So let's go ahead and now do an exercise. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to want to do is create a new data source. And then we're going to go into its properties and see what its default coordinate system is. So right click, new file data source. Let's call it EX2. Now we're going to right click, say properties. Now in the properties window under coordinate we can see the coordinate name. So the coordinate system of this data source is planar coordinate system. Now we're going to go ahead and import worldearth.tif into this data source. So let's go ahead and say import dataset add tif worldearth.tif import now here we see that the coordinate system of this file that we just imported is WGS 1984. Now let's go ahead and create an empty data set and see its default coordinate system. And then 
change it to be the same as the world earth data set. So we're going to say right click new data set and OK. So again, we go under properties, coordinate and see the coordinate name. It says planner coordinate system again. So in order to copy the coordinate system of world earth onto our new data set here, we're going to say copy and we're going to say from data set and we're going to select world earth and say OK. So there we have it. Both these data sets now have the same coordinate system. Now we're going to create a new map. So for that, we go do the start ribbon, map, new map. Now here, under the example 2 data source, we're going to select the new data set that we created and copied the coordinate system of world earth to and we're going to say OK. So here is our new map. We're going to right click anywhere on this empty blank space. We're going to say properties. Now here we have the properties of this blank map right here. We're going to go under the coordinate and we're going to see the coordinate system name. So now as we can see the coordinate system of this newly created map is the same as the data set, which is WGS 1984. Now, this is the content of the coordinate system of the data source, data set, and maps. Generally speaking, some of the data we collected are completely unprocessed, and some have been processed for direct use. So how do we check the coordinates of these data and decide how to subsequently process them? Here, we can divide the imported data into three cases. First of all, most of the remote sensing images that we download from specialized GIS data platform have been processed through image processing such as mosaic, registration, correction, and framing. These data are all with correct coordinates and imported into GIS software. In the future, it can generally be used directly, such as World Earth. So, Talking about World Earth, after we open it, we can move the mouse to see the coordinates of the point where the mouse is located. We can see in the status bar here, which is at the bottom of the map window, that the coordinate values are correct. The data is in the range of 180 degrees from east to west and 90 degrees between north and south. And the coordinate system information displayed is also correct. Such data is ideal. So for the second type of data, as an example, we have imported the building coordinates point data set. Now after opening it, we move the mouse to a building code here. And we see that its coordinate values here are displayed correctly as X and Y. But the coordinate system information is incorrect. In this case, we need to reset the data set's coordinate system. We will see how to do that in the next slide. So the third type of data, such as the image.jpg that we have imported here, has its coordinate values calculated from the point at the bottom left corner of the image. Let's take a look at that. We see that it's close to zero. It starts right here like it would on a Cartesian plane. Now obviously such coordinates cannot correspond to an actual location so we need to match them precisely. And that is done by putting it in a geographic coordinate system or a projected coordinate system, which gives them the real geographical coordinates of the features in the map and finds its true geographical location. For this specific operation process, please see the data registration operation video. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to reset the coordinate system of a data set. So in order to demonstrate the reset option, we are going to use our building coordinate sheet one point data set. So let's go ahead and select it, right click and go into properties. Now here we can see that we have the planner coordinate system. And now since the point data stored in our Excel table is derived from the GPS device, its coordinate system is the WGS 1984 geographic coordinate system. So we're going to go ahead and say reset and select WGS 1984. So this we got from here, we can say more. 
under geographic coordinate system and there we have it WGS 1984 now we can see that it still says planner coordinate system so in order to show that here we need to close this and reopen it and when we reopen it we can see that sure enough it has been changed to WGS 1984 so after the data has the correct coordinates, we often need to put the data in different coordinate systems together. So how can the data in different coordinate systems be displayed in the same space? If we just put them together for display, such as for drawing, it can be done by dynamic projection. If you need to use two or more data sets for spatial query, appending, running an analysis, and mesh, we must first use projection transformation to unify them in a coordinate system before operating. Let's take a deeper understanding through an exercise. All right, so let's talk about coordinate transformation and spatial query. So here we have the coordinate system data source, and we are going to open the Shanxi provincial polygon data set right here. Let's open it up. And here we can see that the coordinate system is WGS 1984. Second, let's open the railway line data set here. And here we can see that it's the Sphere Mercator China 2000 coordinate system. So we have established that both of these data sets have a different coordinate system. So how do we open them up into the same map window? Let's go ahead and drop the railway line data set here onto the provincial map over here. Now we get a coordinate system prompt. Let's read what it says. It says the current map window data coordinate system is inconsistent, which means that they are different, whether to open dynamic projection. So should we or should we not open dynamic projection? We should, because if we don't choose dynamic projection, then they won't stack together correctly. We will be able to see a single layer, but it's really hard to find the other one, simply because they have different coordinate systems. Now this way of loading, that is without dynamic projection, is incorrect. So when we load them together, we must turn on dynamic projection, which dynamically projects the rail line data into the WGS 1984 coordinate system. Now this is only temporary though. It does not change the coordinate values, and coordinate system information of the data. So let's go ahead and say yes. So there we have it. It's been loaded or dynamically projected onto the Shanxi Provincial Polygon data set. So now let's talk about spatial query. Let's think of a scenario that we want to find out from the map how many railways are in Shanxi province. So what should we do? So first of all, we're going to go ahead and go into the spatial analysis ribbon. And here, normally, we would go under spatial query. But when we do that, we see that both 2D and 3D spatial query options have been grayed out. They are disabled. Now, this is because only the data that is in the same coordinate system can have a spatial query or analysis done on it. So we're going to do something different in this case. We're going to go under the start ribbon, and we're going to go to projection transformation. And here we are directly going to click on projection transformation. We're not going to go for the arrow part. We're directly going to click on the top of the button here where the arrows are. Let's go ahead and do that. So it gives us another dialog window which says dataset projection transform. Now here we have the coordinate system data source and we're going to select the railway line data set. Now the next step is to select our target data set, the data set whose coordinate system we want. So we will say from data set and we are going to select the Shanxi Provincial Polygon data set and we're going to say convert. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to delete the original railway line data set. Right click, delete data set. Okay. Now, in order for us to be able to see the changes, we need to close this current map and reload it. Let's close this right there. So you can see again, where we have it. And then let's drop the railway line data set onto the map once again. Now, as we can see here, the coordinate systems of both layers are the same. So in this case, we can run a spatial query. So first, we make sure that the polygon layer is selectable. We select it, then we go under the spatial analysis ribbon. 
we say spatial query, 2D spatial query. Now here we're going to check the line data set and we're going to say intersect. We're going to save the results, let's say as Shanxi Railway and we're going to say Curie. So there we have it. All the railways going into the province have been selected. Let's see how many there are. We can see that a total of 54 records indicating that the province has 54 railway lines. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial on coordinate systems in Supermap iDesktop. For more information, please turn to the help document or contact us directly. Thank you.